There was a lot of outrage this week when uh, nationalist group Patriot Blue, which was uh, founded by um, long-time uh, Patriot activist uh, Neil Erickson, they uh, decided to go up to Sam Dastiari in a restaurant in Melbourne and uh, uh, dish out a lot of abuse to him. They called him a monkey terrorist, uh, told him to you know, go back to Iran. It was, you know, the, the, it, was, it was pretty you know, intense uh, uh, stuff. Uh, the media, uh, politicians, and even some conservative commentators condemned it, saying it was, you know, an ugly uh, I incident. Now, obviously, uh, like yeah, going up to a politician and you know ye yelling abuse at them is not the the nicest thing to do. But the position that I, that I took was it's still more uh, more civil than uh, what left wing activists do because. They've, what happened is there, Neil Erickson and there was two others with him, like they, they didn't obstruct, you know, Sam Dastyari's movement at all. If you watch the videos, which um, they've been deleted from Facebook now, uh, you know, Sam Dastyari is able to order his drink, go over and, you know, uh, sit down. They stay for about five minutes and, and then leave. And, you know, security doesn't need to be called or anything. They just have their say and, and go. Right. Um, well, I think uh, two things that have to be addressed there is that, uh, first of all, when it comes to uh, to protests and confrontations, obviously, they're, they're very different. Uh, here, that, that, that was more of a confrontation. That wasn't um, an organized, enormous group of people going to, uh, to kind of protest a, a movement or a happening. It was just a couple of people kind of finding this guy at a Melbourne restaurant and uh, yelling things that were pretty, pretty outrageous, uh, which I think anyone would be good to, um, to condemn. Uh, however, the the one thing that we have on the right, which we don't have, which we uh, on the rather what we have on the left, which we don't have on the right, is sort of the culture of punch a Nazi, right? Where any time that someone we disagree with is um, is present, we're just going to label him a Nazi, which gives us the the right to go ahead and inflict violence on them, which um, which the right has the moral high ground on. We, if, they, if they just don't don't feel it's um, necessary to uh, to inflict violence on someone who they disagree with. However, what they did was completely unacceptable, and I think that uh, that even though we see uh, a lot more physical um, altercations on the left, it doesn't mean that we should say, well, that's why it's okay, or that's why it's less bad. I mean, it's pretty, pretty shady on its own merit. Uh, I think sometimes the left deserve a bit a bit back, and, uh, you know, that, that's how I interpreted the the incident. Uh, and, and it's interesting that the left, you know, they dish out so much, but, you know, as soon as one of their own is, you know, put in a slightly uncomfortable position, they completely lose their shit and they're like, oh, you know, like Nazis are on the streets of Melbourne now. Oh, you know, you can't even go to the, the, the pub now without, you know, being harassed. Like, oh, this is, you know, such <laughs> the, the worst thing that ever happened. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean that that's another thing I guess uh, we have to we have to kind of take into consideration really really kind of the um, the doomsday scenario mindset that exists on both ends and I think we have to see um, just how both ends react now you have on the left a culture of um, sort of our feelings matter and uh, we have the right to kind of fight for uh, for our liberties and whatever and they just have turned into this antifa SJW mindset where you can kind of go and um, and, and it kind of inflict violence. But what we see in terms of confrontations, we're not talking about um, about actual rioting or anything like that. When we're seeing uh, people on the left and people on the right kind of confronting one individual, they seem to be pretty similar. Uh, I mean, if you look at how, how college students have confronted um, people uh, high up in the, in the university because they let them wear whichever costumes they want, whatever, they don't seem to go up and punch them or anything like that. It seems to be kind of similar to the right, where they go and they scream, they don't let the other people speak, and you know they kind of launch these character um, attacks. And uh, so we're not that different in that sense. I will say that, that the left has kind of gone off the rails, and I think just because they've kind of uh, lost their shit after... Um, so much conservative uh, winning, but uh, but no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that uh, that the left is unique in their uh, shady tactics when it comes to attacking people they don't like. 
I mean, look at what the Australian left has, has done this week alone. Uh, on uh, Melbourne Cup Day, uh, pro, uh, prote protesters who uh, are, are against the uh, closure of the Manus Island Detention Centre, they drove a car onto the Flemington uh, Racecourse railway line, uh, which takes people to, to the Melbourne Cup because, you know, in, in their words, they wanted to punish racegoers for their, you know, alleged uh, complicity in the, in the government's actions. So basically they're prepared to, you know, inconvenience thousands of uh, race goers to make a political point, which seems weird. Like, uh, the the way to convince people is to inconvenience them, to like punish them. That seems like a weird way to convince people. And then there was also a uh, another protest uh, of, against Manus Island uh, at a uh, Liberal Party fundraiser for Tony Abbott and uh, Christine Forster, who's uh, Tony Abbott's sister, she was attacked on the way in and got a uh, jacket uh, ripped. Um, so that is just what the left has done uh, this, this, this week alone. I mean, they've aggressed, you know, either physically or, you know, through inconveniencing people against the public. I mean, right. and there's, there, there's not the same level of outrage as there was against the Sam Destiari incident. Right. No, no, no. And I mean, that, that's one of the things that, I, that I'm going to... Uh, right now we're talking about actual protests because what we saw, uh, what we were talking about earlier when this guy uh, was, was kind of confronted in, in uh, the Melbourne restaurant, that wasn't a protest, right? And so when it comes to uh, left-wing protests and right-wing protests, I absolutely will concede that they are far more violent and their their tactics their tactics are far more um, incendiary and far more um, and they have just far more more uh, implications for the public. And again, as you say, like why would they inconvenience the public? How is that any way to bring them onto their side? Well, that's why they can't win a fucking election. I mean, that's why uh, we see kind of like this takeover of either um, center right or right. Uh, however, uh, we we do see some protests on the right, which even though they are not violent and they're not kind of creating this enormous inconvenience for people, uh, still are pretty, pretty, um, they're pretty incendiary, they're pretty uh, bad in, in what they're preaching. And so even though we see some very bad tactics on the left, I don't think that we should kind of take that to say the left is the only one that's, that's taking on some shady uh, tactics when it comes to voicing their opinion in a group. Well, uh, there, there obviously have been, you know, right-wing protests that have, you know, got, are gone off the rails. But I do think when it comes to, uh, you know, protests causing public disturbances, it's clearly uh, a leftist problem. Like, I've, like in, in Australia at least, it's, it's always been that the police need to restrain uh, leftist protesters. Like, when, whenever the left and right... Uh, in the same place, the the police are always facing and trying to hold back the the left. That's where all the aggression comes from. And another development this week was that uh, Sydney University they want to charge conservative groups uh, security fees for for their events because the left always come and uh, protest it. One, the Sydney University. Uh, conservative club, they wanted to hold uh, an event uh, talking about the future of coal and they were told they needed security for it. Apparently the left there, they're triggered by even the discussion of coal. Well, uh, one thing that I'd be careful though, which, which, I, which I like to say, is that we need to, we need to draw a clear distinction between the left and the leftists. So the left is, you know, just a political uh, ideology which lies on this end, and then you have the leftists, which are kind of like the crazy Antifa, SJW people who uh, kind of just get triggered over everything. So that's the first thing I would say. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, absolutely just the the level of um, triggeredness of the left and the the ability to just decide that anything that isn't left wing is is uh, hate speech or violence is off the rails, and that's something that completely has to be addressed. Uh, when it comes to Sydney uh, Uni saying that they have to um, charge, charge conservative groups uh, fees for uh, for their protection, I'm wondering what it was. Is this basically Sydney Uni say, trying to get less conservative people to speak on their campus, or are they just being pragmatic about the fact that uh, people are going to come protest, kind of try to come and inflict violence on people that uh, they're not uh, they're they're conservative? And thus, we need to cover their expenses, and we're not going to do it out of pocket, so they have to do it. Obviously, both of those are, uh, are kind of uh, shady, but I mean that's that's kind of like the world we live in. The fact of the matter is, if you have a conservative speaking on any subject, 
probably going to have some Antifas there, you know, ready to crack some skulls. Well, but that doesn't mean you should basically, you know, charge the victim. Like, oh, you're about to be uh, aggressed upon, so we're going to, like, stick you with the, with, the, with the bill so you, you don't get attacked. Yeah, no, it, no, it's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. And, uh, and if you, even if you see what happened in Berkeley with this uh, conservative American called Ben Shapiro, um, Berkeley, you know, uh, said, we're going we to, we have to basically let this guy speak. That's what this university is about. And so they took on a bail of $600,000 just to make sure that, you know, the Antifas and the SJWs weren't able to go in and, you know, just basically start attacking any conservative in sight. Um, so it, would that be the proper solution? And can Sydney University afford to to uh, protect the speakers? Absolutely. So um, that's why I was saying that both sides of the coin are shady, whether it's that they're trying to suppress uh, conservative speakers from coming or whether they're just trying to not pay out of pocket to protect conservatives. Both sides are completely, completely shady. And obviously Sydney Uni uh, should not be taking on that. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.